welcome to my video podcast. I like to call it a blog. I put it on YouTube. Whatever you want to call it, this is it. I'm going to just show some of the little setup that I use for my blog. I have a blue screen behind me. I have a microphone. You see my hand? It's in the screen. The microphone. Let me come up a little further. See where my hand goes off a frame? Now I'm almost, I'm touching it right now. So my microphone's barely out of the frame. And I've got a bunch of different lights on because lighting is important. And if I put my hand up, we shouldn't see a shadow on the blue screen behind. And hopefully I've done a fairly decent job at doing that. And my, hopefully my face is lighted up. It's a little brighter on one side than the other. I was going to set up another light and I forgot. But I'm a Toastmaster. I belong to Toastmasters International. And we give lots of speeches. But this is the... 21st century. And my stupid furnace just turned on. So when the furnace turns on, I don't want to record because then you hear more and more wind noise. And maybe I should leave this in my blog just to show the difference of what the wind noise sounds like. The furnace is started, and there's the fan. Listen to this wonderful noise. So I wait until the furnace is stopped. So I'll have to have a take two. I'm sitting in the same spot that I was before. Now you can see my microphone. You can see my blue screen behind me, but you see also background stuff. The setup that I've used for my camera, it's a sub Panasonic. It's just an HD camcorder, and it does not have an audio input of any kind. It has a microphone on it, but there's no way I can run this microphone signal into the camera. So I'm recording this microphone into my computer, and then in post-production, I'll sync them together, and I clap my hands three times so that I can see the peak and line them all together. Because I, I do have audio on the camera. It just doesn't sound very good nearly as good as this nice microphone i'm going to scoot up now i'm a lot louder i need to adjust the gain on my preamp if you use uh this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone they sound really good and if i get up really close they sound awesome but I didn't really want it to show in the frame most of the time. And on my previous two videos, I didn't have it show in the frame, but it was still only a foot away from my mouth. There's really two good choices, perhaps three good choices, for doing a video interview like this. One is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. And if you get one, get one with USB. You plug it right into your uh, computer or find one that's compatible with your phone. One important thing to remember to use is put up a an outline to follow. Because I tend to forget where I'm going. This speech, I am not. And I don't know where to go. Sound is very important. We could have bad video. But, but if, if you, you can't, can't understand what I'm saying, if it's mushy, if it's crackly, if you hear the wind or the air conditioner or heater running and hear that constant buzz and hum and hiss in the microphone, it's less enjoyable. A nice, crisp, clear mic signal is the best thing. So pay attention to that. Use a condenser microphone, use a lavalier that you can put on your clothing, or if you want to hide it, just off screen. They give you good sound too, just be careful not to brush up against it. Or you can use a shotgun mic over the camera. They work really well too. Built-in microphones in cameras, 
not so good. You're better off not using that. But if you do control the sound in your room, don't do it when it's windy outside, unless you have a dead cat, which is a windscreen. They work best on shotgun microphones, but if you can get one on your camera, that's great. Or an external microphone. A boom pole above your speaker's head is great if you have somebody to run it for you. This mic is on a normal mic stand with a boom. But it's just a stand. I don't have anyone carrying it for me. I'm doing this all myself. Lighting is important. You want to have enough light that you can see the person that you're videoing. One thing I learned by doing these podcasts is editing takes forever. If you can do it in one shot, it's great. The more edits I have to make, the longer it takes. And the time seems to be exponential. The more I make, if I do a 10-minute video and I have to make 20 edits, it's going to take me three or four hours to edit it. If I could do it all in one shot, it takes me 15 minutes. The big upshot here is we get better. We can watch the video on how to do video and audio. But if you really want to learn to do it, there's no substitute for actually doing it and experimenting and trying everything on your own. Then we have a device to help each other. My motto in life, in Toastmasters, and in my band is practice, practice, practice. The more we do it, the better we get.